Being a mountain biker is like a dream. Mountain biking itself is made up of incredible days in the sun, riding incredible lines, and drinking in all that joy of nature. Perfection, right? Well, in all honesty, that isn't the way it always goes. In fact, quite often, it all goes wrong. It rains, you get hurt, the bike breaks, and that's a problem. So, first of all, let's break things down because there are a lot of ways that things can go wrong. And in all honesty, I can't cover them all. However, I am going to do my very best to touch on the main ways a ride can be ruined by things that with some forethought could either be avoided, mitigated, or even eradicated. Although I can't promise that last one. So here are the benchmark problems I've highlighted that can ruin a great mountain bike ride. First off is an obvious one, the weather. The obvious way to ruin a ride is the weather. This has the power to stop you in your tracks. Crashing, of course, a huge crash could absolutely scupper your riding plans and result in a huge hospital bill too. Not good. Mechanicals, oh, what about a massive mechanical? Yep, that would do in it. Nothing worse than arriving at the top of a huge climb only to realize your bike is broken and you now have to push down. Oh, that would be the worst. Punctures, oh man, bikes. Punctures could come under the same banner of mechanical, but I feel like the problem is so prevalent that it deserves its own space. Getting lost. Getting lost is another one that is easily overlooked. How do you avoid that lonely night in the woods because you can't find the trail and all the trees look the same? Let's try and solve that. Friends. <laughs> this one's crazy. What about people? Now you think your friends would be an absolute shoe in for a great time, but even they can find ways to mess it all up. Okay. I think if we solve these problems, then mountain biking will be perfect from here on in. So let's get to it. First up, the weather. What's that old saying? There's no such thing as bad weather, just the wrong clothes. To a certain extent, that's true. The right clothes will be a huge advantage when the heavens open on you. But there's also nothing worse than getting too hot because you haven't to wear a huge coat. The answer is layers. That top layer, for instance, that could keep you warm and dry and protected from the wind. It could also be something so light and compact that it can wrap down small enough to fit in any bag or even attached to the frame itself. These tech coats can be expensive, but once you have the option at any time to cover up or offload a top layer, then you'll never be troubled with the weather again. And once you've been saved by that top layer just one time, you'll never leave home without it. Other things to think about regarding weather, your tires. Are your tires suitable for what the weather could throw at you? Get this wrong and the ride could be ruined for sure. And you're also treading dangerously close to that crash subject that's coming up too. Gloves are another option that is often overlooked. The material technology that makes those layers I mentioned work so well is utilized in gloves too. That means you can keep your hands warm and dry. Anyone who's had a ride destroyed by freezing hands will know just how game-changing constantly warm hands can be. Actually, a little hack for you. On a cold day, try wearing rubber medical gloves under your normal riding gloves. This can make a big difference when it comes to toasty hands. Give it a try. Yep, sounds simple, but a lot of the time we just have to be prepared for the weather to test us. See it as an opportunity to enjoy how the terrain changes with the weather, how the challenge to your body is different due to the temperature or conditions. Toughen up by finding another way to look at things. This can be a very powerful change in your mountain biking ability. Having a different perspective on what the weather does for your ride in a positive way is an attitude that can feel like a superpower once you get it right. Okay, most crashes are things we would like to avoid, and they only really happen because we didn't see them coming. However, although that is true, many times we crash because we allowed ourselves to go beyond our comfort zone, or we allowed others to push us beyond our comfort zone. So, measure your riding decisions against some semblance of common sense. Ask yourself before you try a big jump, a big sketchy riding line, or a huge drop-off, ask yourself, 
Should I do it? Is it beyond me? The riding skills required a hard one, so you know if you have the ability. If you think the skills for a certain obstacle will magically appear when the moment arrives, I can tell you now, they won't. The other thing to consider when we're trying to avoid crashing is timing. We often crash because we've pushed ourselves when we were tired, or the weather conditions require a different approach to normal. So as you become tired whilst out on a ride, start to reevaluate the scope of what you should be trying, how fast you should be going. Don't push yourself or your riding abilities when you're tired. Time your moment, so when you're full of confidence and energy, that is the time to push yourself. When you're tired and unsure, that's when you crash. Mechanicals might seem like a problem that can't be solved until you know something is broken, but that isn't really true when you think it through. No, the secret to avoiding the majority of mechanicals is maintenance of the bike, which often starts with a thorough wash after the last ride. This is the point where the bike gets a clean and lubed, obviously immediately lowering the probability of wear and tear breaking the bike. The bike wash is also your chance to look closely at the bike and see if you can spot issues with the components or the bike frame itself. Really look closely at the bike as you wash it and lube it. If you spot something looking like it needs attention, then schedule in the time to fix it before the next ride. If you don't do that, then you're really inviting the mechanical to ruin your next ride. Another way to stop mechanicals ruining a ride is take the correct tools and a few items of ingenuity along the way. This is as simple as a multi-tool, a few zip ties and a small roll of electrical tape. With those items on board, many mechanicals can be hacked or bodged into a solution to get you home. I've seen it so many times on the Dirt Shed Show. You wouldn't believe the things people can come up with using just a few zip ties and some tape. Doddy has made whole videos about it. In part two of this video, I'll be looking at how friends, punctures and getting lost can absolutely ruin your ride and how to stop that happening. Make sure you check it out and let me know in the comments if I've solved your ruined rides with this video. I probably have. In the comments, you can also tell everyone else how about how you ruined your rides and how you tackled them. You'll be helping your fellow riders think of ways to make their next ride a great one. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe, that's important. Love, like and share on all your favourite platforms and I'll see you next time for a problem solved.